but um, in Formula One, it has to be always good uh, characters and, and, and bad ones and heroes and anti-heroes. So I'm on, on the dark side. Fernando Alonso is one of the most arrogant drivers in Formula One, blackmailing, humiliating peers and cheating to win. He's done it all to stay on top. If not for his talent, he would have been kicked out of the sport long ago. From a data leak scandal to a brutal rivalry between Lewis Hamilton, Alonso's moves have drawn criticism from fans and peers alike. Some F1 fans even call him a villain. But is he really a villain, or are we missing something? What if Alonso has noble reasons for his actions? Let's get to the facts so you can decide if Alonso is a hopeless jerk or the anti-hero F1 needs. Formula One enthusiasts accused Alonso of alienating his peers with obsession to win. He does what he wants no matter if it's right or wrong. Fact is, the Spaniard has run over his colleagues many times. Not literally, but his actions were still brutal. Take Exhibit A. When Alonso fought Lewis Hamilton and almost took McLaren down. During 2007's season, Fernando has a brutal rivalry with Lewis Hamilton. The Spaniard was already a champion and he became furious when the newcomer stole the spotlight. Hamilton couldn't care less about Alonso's feelings and did everything to stand out. During Hungary's Grand Prix qualifier, Hamilton disobeyed McLaren's orders to let Alonso pass and took temporary pole position, supposed to be Alonso's. Fernando was raging and wouldn't go down quietly that day. Far from it. Tension was high as the team prepared to execute their plan to stack the cars before one final qualifying lap. Alonso was to receive a fresh set of tyres and be sent out, followed by Hamilton, who'd also received the same treatment. But after Alonso's tyre change was completed, he intentionally remained stationary for an agonising 10 seconds, blocking Hamilton behind him. What was going on? The team and fans alike were on edge as they watched the clock tick down wondering what was going on. Finally, Alonso hit the accelerator and sped away, leaving Hamilton in his wake. The delay had been just long enough to prevent Hamilton from completing one final lap and snatching pole position. Things were different back then. Drivers had slow and fast lap times in qualifying due to fuel burning phases. Alonso blocked Hamilton on his fastest lap and best chance at securing pole position. Calculated and ruthless for Fernando to say the least. But the plan backfired. Alonso was punished and lost the position. Furious with the outcome, he decided to blackmail McLaren's president, Ron Dennis. You see, FIA was investigating McLaren due to a leak of Ferrari's plans. But lack of evidence halted the investigation. Alonso saw this as an opportunity and threatened to spill the tea unless McLaren left Hamilton without fuel in the next race. McLaren didn't take the bait. They wouldn't bow to Alonso's ego. The president confessed to FIA and the company paid $100 million fine. McLaren fired Alonso. Sure, pay $100 million, but let the blackmailing driver win. Neither the Spaniard nor Hamilton took the championship that year, and the victory went to Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen. You may be surprised, but that wasn't even Alonso's worst strike in a co-worker. This honour is reserved for 2008's Singaporean Grand Prix. Exhibit B. This time, Alonso cheated to win. Back with Renault, Alonso drove alongside Nelson Piquet Jr. During the race, Alonso was far behind, completely out of the running for a victory. Conveniently, Piquet's vehicle crashed, prompting the intervention of the safety car. The safety car was Alonso's only possible way of winning, given he was so far behind, prompting Fernando to make up crucial time and win the race. It seemed a weird coincidence, but a year later, the truth was out. Nelson was fired from Renault and told everything to FIA. His crash had been on purpose due to management's orders. The case was investigated and Renault's directors were punished. Alonso got away, 
there was no proof he knew anything. But in this last move, he knew exactly what was going on. Exhibit C. That time, Alonso stole Felipe Massa's lead. In 2010, Alonso was running for Ferrari, but things weren't going so well. There were lots of expectations on the Spaniard, but he was 47 points behind the championship leader. Then things took a turn for the better. During Germany's Grand Prix, Ferrari had the first two positions, with Massa first and Alonso second. Then came a message for Massa on the radio. Alonso is faster than you. It seems innocent enough, but at the time, teams weren't allowed to tell the drivers what to do. The message was a code. Massa should let Alonso take the lead. At first, the Brazilian driver ignored it, but after much insistence from the team, he complied Alonso won the GP, with a rainfall of critics fell over him. Did he deserve it? Alonso took some bad actions, but in most cases, he simply complied with the team's directives. Besides, was he wrong in all cases? Hamilton's rising power left no space for him on the team, and if he was faster than Massa, shouldn't he take the lead? But in PK's case, really can't defend the Spaniard. That one was brutal. Still, as bad as he was with colleagues, he could be even more defiant with the authorities on the team. Alonso always uses the press in his favour. People could hate him, but he wouldn't let team mistakes peg him as a bad driver. In 2005, Alonso had everything going for him. He was the youngest Formula One champion ever. But after the win, he told the press he didn't feel Renault was supportive. The declaration left a sour taste in the dreary teams and fans' mouths. In December of that year, Alonso signed with McLaren, even though he had a full year left with Renault. Alonso and Renault remained at odds. The Spaniard declared the team had abandoned him and cared more about the Constructors' Championship. Yet Alonso won that year's championship, beating Michael Schumacher. The controversial remarks kept coming through the years. In 2013, Alonso had a bad phase with Ferrari. His car had many problems and was nowhere near Red Bull's level. In Hungary's Grand Prix, which was next to his birthday, an interviewer asked what he wanted as a gift. He answered, a car like the others, referring to Red Bull's machine. Ferrari's president was furious and told the press drivers should be more humble and put the team's goals first. Alonso never won another race with Ferrari and left it until 2014, two contract years still remaining. But my favourite press moment with Alonso was yet to come. In 2015, Alonso went back to McLaren and the company began a partnership with Honda. It went terribly wrong. Alonso criticised Honda all the time. He compared the company's motors to that of GP2 cars and said he looked like an amateur due to the car's bad performance in Canada. Then came the last drop. An engine defect forced him to park during qualifying in Brazil, so he protested. He grabbed a lawn chair on the track and sat sunbathing, posing for the TV cameras. Absolute classic moment. But here comes the question. Was Alonso a jerk or only speaking the truth? He was a top-notch driver, but engine problems kept him from fulfilling his potential. You know, the way I see it, the guy was just ensuring his image as an excellent driver remained intact. Still, no matter how much bravado you have, one day the dam bursts. After such self-reflection, Alonso retired from Formula One. At the end of 2018, Alonso left McLaren and F1. His final race came at the 2018 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But he changed his mind. In 2021, he signed with Alpine, formerly known as Renault. His performance there was disappointing. Just one podium and third place in 2021 Qatar GP. Tired of Alpine's neglect, Alonso made his last move. In August of 2022, he left Alpine for Aston Martin and a multiple-year agreement. It didn't seem like a jerk move, just normal business until shit hit the fan. Turns out Alonso was negotiating to renew the contract with Alpine, but he left the company without saying anything. 
Alpine's boss only found out about Alonso's departure through the press, even though the driver had told him the day before he hadn't signed with anyone yet. Alpine was left in a terrible situation and had to find another driver in a rush. When confronted about his choice, Alonso said he left Alpine because the company was content with staying at any place. Fourth place was great for them, but Alonso wanted victory. Can you blame him? Formula One fans have accused Alonso of taking controversial actions to further his career. They're not wrong, but that isn't all there is to it. Alonso may feel like a diva, but he complains so much because there's always something standing in his way. Many argue he's one of the best drivers out there, even though statistics don't show it. The thing is, Alonso had bad luck and bad timing. This has stopped him from getting more wins and titles. He's done the best with flawed cars and competing teammates, but F1 is not just about the best driver. It's about the best cars and the best circumstances, and Alonso hasn't hit these big three requirements in a long time. Still, the guy's 41 and as excited as he was when he was 25. He's such a pain in the ass for teams and colleagues because he's passionate about the sport. He doesn't want to be just fine. He wants to be great. He wants first place. And isn't that the reason for admiration? So, do you think Alonso is a villain or an anti-hero? Let us know in the comments. Even if you hate him, he wasn't the only F1 driver to cheat. In fact, Alonso's crash gate doesn't even make the top three in a list of drivers who cheated to win. Want to see who's the biggest cheater of all? Click on the video and find out more.